Okay. A um, couple things. So this this was a chart that I handed out on Friday, um, just so that you know what mechanisms will you have to know next week. Um, I put this chart with with highlighting online, but just so that um, you can mark them. The mechanisms that you will need to know how to do are number one, the HX. Um, HBR, H2O2, H plus H2O, H plus ROH. So those first four you will need to know the mechanisms for. And then the BR2 and the BR2 with water would be the ones that you need to know the complete mechanisms for. Now, um, the question came up <clears throat> in terms of looking at the older exams. Typically, the BR2 and the BR2 with water, I only ask for intermediates and not transition states. And the reason that I don't ask for transition states is because by the time you get the triangular dotted lines to the BR, and then you've got dotted lines in the transition state, it just becomes a mess. So for the bromination and bromination with water, I will not ask for transition states only intermediates. So if you're looking at older exams, you'll see that. You may see that I only ask for intermediates um, in some of the other ones, but you'll still have to know the transition states for the other reactions for the first four. Okay, so um, just the bromine and the bromine with water, you won't have to know the transition states, just intermediates. Okay. Now, people have asked, hey, can you give me a list of topics for experiment three? I could. But I think it's better and more educationally sound if you come up with that list of topics yourself, starting with E2 reactions. So if you go back through your notes or the textbook, you could come up with that list. Because if you come up with the list, then at least you've looked through your notes and seen where you're sufficient or not sufficient. And if you need incentive, we can make that happen too. So maybe we should just make that list an assignment for Wednesday to come up with the list of topics for next week's exam. So that's what we will do. Okay. So what I can do is I can take a look, make sure you take a picture of it or something. So once you come up with your list, you have your list, I'll hand them back on Friday, but make sure you have a copy of it. And then what I'll do is I'll just take everybody's list and come up with a topic with the whole list of topics. Seems it seems evil, but not really, because this is kind of what... I, I've had people walk in my office, and then they just put their folder, binder, whatever on my desk, and it's just paper everywhere. I mean, it's not even a hot mess. It's just a mess. So the first thing I usually say to them is, look, before you even start studying, what are you going to study? Because you've got stuff everywhere. So you need to kind of think that through. If you're a person who already has it in a three-ring binder, great. You know, I mean, that kind of discipline should be rewarded. But it may or may not be in real life. But it's always good to do that. But if you just have everything everywhere, that's the first place you got to start. So I said, you need to start. What, are we, what do you need to focus on for the exam? And this is usually like the day before, not even, you know, a week out. So that's why I'm asking you to do this. I mean, if you've ever had to do like re reflection papers after the exam, how did I study? What should I have done better? I think those are called exam wrappers. All this stuff is just think about, you know, you have a system. If you don't have a good system, maybe you need to borrow one from somebody else. But I don't, I can't mess with your system. I've been told by students, 
don't mess with my research students. She's like, don't mess with my system. Back off. Nope, not messing with your system. But the reason, anybody ever heard, oh, if you get a C in organic, you can't go to medical school? This is a common phrase out there. It's BS. Last time I was in the emergency room, I believe the former student who came in to do something, anesthesia or something like that, was a former student. And I don't remember, but they were not an A-plus student, at least the first time through. I believe he came in my office and said, I'm going to get an A next semester. And I went, okay. And he did. But first semester was not, was not uh, A-plus. So that statement doesn't mean anything. But there is a reasoning behind why they say organic is sort of one of these. It's not a weed class. I don't approach it that way. If I did, seats there would be plenty of empty seats here. right? You know people that do that. It's because in, in, those, in those health professions, you've got to go through a lot of material. And you have to organize it and learn it in a very short amount of time. Now, most times they break it up into you take this, you take this, you take this, and maybe you're doing that now. I don't know, maybe. But the reason why they say organic is sort of a predictor, and again, it's, it's really not. But why it could be is because of all the information you have to organize. And so that's something you have to do for this exam. And this exam can, and this material can be organized fairly straightforwardly. Um, this is probably the first one where you, there is a system you can use. But that's why they say that. So it's not so much, well, this is the predictor of whether or not you can survive. It's just a question of this is the first class that you've had where you've had to organize a lot of material, maybe genetics as well. But, you know, if, that's, if there's a weed class, there are people who think that's a weed class. I would never say that about organic. Like I said, I never approach it that way. I never have. There are other people with, that do that, but they're not in my department. So, see, you know, see what's to, put your stuff together. Um, but the first thing would be what are what topics do I need to know? So, to give you proper incentive, I will make that an assignment for for Wednesday, and then I will come up with a list, but. Anything you can do to organize this in here or all this in here is going to be what you need to do. I may put up some more practice problems. I think I'm completely out of practice problems. What I did was I moved the practice addition problems into today's folder from a couple Fridays ago. I forgot to do that before break, so I just moved them in there today. I don't think those problems include things like hydrogenation and cis hydroxylation, so I may put together a few of those today as well. And the flow chart is just kind of what it, we did last week in terms of talking about the system of trying to figure out whether it's regio or stereo selective. The flow chart kind of gets to the point, but there's reasoning behind the flow chart that we'll even talk about today with problems. All right, so that's, so give me, you know, go through the list, and you can do the book, you can use the notes. You know, I post the notes after each class online, so. Did anybody have any questions about any of the <coughs> reactions? You said starting from E2, but are you going to do, like, the E1, the certain outside, and the other? Well, E2, E2 is terse betoxide, and H2 minus. Um, chapter 11 was all about SN1, SN2, E1, and E2. So I think that's all of that is probably fair game as well. Um, so that would be, I think that would be fair game as well. But I would just limit it to sort of the major topics. Like one thing we haven't talked about is how to solvents, how did solvents we talked a little bit about how, I talked a little bit on Piazza and questions about how solvents affected SN1 and SN2. But we don't use solvent effects in E2. So that could be on the next exam as well, the solvent effects. So 
I'll go through what you guys have, what you guys give me, and then I'll add what I think could be others. But if you go through there, that's the case. Any questions about the additions? So today, let's practice our writing products of reactions and telling me whether the reaction is regio, stereo, selected both, or neither. So here is the first reaction. What would be the major product of this reaction? And then is it regio, stereo, both, or neither? Okay. So and you have a chart and a flow chart if you need to use those, but go ahead and okay. So when you got your reactions, when you have your products, product or products, you can hold them up. Make sure that the farther away from you you are, the bigger your structure gets. So like if you're writing it this big in the back row, I'm, I'll have to take a picture of it and blow it up because I'm not going to be able to see that far. Okay. And you can discuss if you'd like. I'd love stereochemistry if, if the reaction gives, has a particular stereochemistry that's doing. So what that means is, is if it's 50-50, there's no need to draw bold and dashed lines because you'd have to write all the possibilities. And then when you've got it written, you can hold it up and I can sort of acknowledge Well, Annie, Annie, let me see you. Okay. Mm, I take a look at your product again. Uh, look at your choice of selectivities. If you need another product. You need another product, and you'll need to look at your selectivities. Okay. 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 You you do have two products, but you need a, you need another product. Okay. Do I see double bonds? No. No, 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 not yours. Okay. 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 Let's see. Okay. Okay, but you need to think about selectivity. Is it stereo selective? Okay, the products are okay. Yeah. 
but it's okay. I can make it out, I guess. Okay. Um, okay. 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 I think. Think about selectivity. Okay, Catherine. Yeah, there's really only two there, yeah, yeah. so yeah. that's okay. Okay, have I seen most people's? Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> okay, so first thing that we need to know is, well, for the exam on Monday, I'm going to ask you to write mechanisms for writing, writing the mechanisms of addition reactions, as well as I could ask you a mechanism for E2 as well. Um, but for a problem like this, as much the mechanism as you need to write to get the final product, you can do. But for the most part, I'm asking you to write the major product of the reaction. So you're going to have to be able to write the product as well as write the product from getting the mechanism. So the easiest thing for me to do is to say, okay, in this case, what am I adding to the double bond? What groups am I adding? An H and a BR. Okay, so I've got a methyl group here and I've got an ethyl group here. How am I adding it? Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov? Anti? Okay, so which carbon gets the H, the top or the bottom? Okay, it does matter, but it's going to be 50-50. So the H is going to add to the top, and the H is also going to add to the bottom. Because in this case, which carbon, the top or the bottom one, has the most amount of hydrogens? They both have the same number, which is zero. So therefore, the H and the BR are going to add 50-50. Stereochemistry-wise, the H and the BR add what? 100% cis, 100% trans, 50-50. 50-50? Why? It goes through an intermediate, an sp2 hybridized intermediate, which is not a carbocation in this case because it's <laughs> the radical. So it goes through a radical intermediate that's sp2 hybridized. Notice that on the chart, the first four reactions over in the notes section those are all 50-50 because the reaction goes through an sp2 hybridized intermediate, carbocation, or in this case, a radical. So that means that in terms of the stereochemistry, I don't have to show the stereochemistry because it's going to add 50-50. It's going to add both cis and trans. So in this case, I'm just going to show a straight line. Sometimes you'll see a squiggly line like this, a squiggly bond in the book, that means that it's 50-50 bold dashed is what that squiggly line means. Okay, so in this case, we have those two products. And they are 50-50. Is the reaction regioselective? It did make two products, but did it select one over the other? No. So this is not regioselective. Is it stereoselective? No, it's never going to be stereoselective because, because it's 50-50 cis and trans. Okay. So if you look at kind of the flow chart, the flow chart is just a way to get at that, at the answers to 
those questions. So for instance, for stereoselectivity, is the reaction 100% cis or trans? If it, the answer is no, it's not stereoselective right off the bat. If it is, we'll get to that. You go to the second choice. And then for regioselectivity, is the reagent symmetrical? If the answer is yes, it's not. Is the alkene symmetrical? If the answer is yes, it's not regioselective. Then the big question is, is a single Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov product formed? In this case, a single product is not formed, right? We've got two, pro two major products, and so no, it's not regioselective. So it's stereoselective, or no, regio. So when you say reagent symmetrical, does that mean it's the only reagent, or can it be? What I, what I mean by that is, this, does the reagent add the same two groups okay. to the double bond? And the three I've listed there are the ones that are symmetrical. So in other words, H2 adds two, OH, two Hs, Br2 adds two Brs, and the osmium tetroxide or the camino 4 and base add two OHs. So if you're adding the same group to the double bond, you can't be Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov. And really, that's what regioselectivity is about. It's about Markovnikov and anti-Markovnikov, but it's also about you have to form those two different, those two products. They got to be different but you have to favor one over the other. That's where the Markovnikov and anti-Markovnikov come into play. So the trickiest part of this is the fact that the reagent may be Markovnikov, but in this case, the alkene didn't favor one because it's made 50-50. So that's why you have to think about, think about the different, um, the implications of what it means to be regio selective. Any questions? Okay, so in this case, let's take ethyl cyclohexene reacted with hydrogen and palladium. What's the major product? And what would the reaction be in terms of stereo or regio selectivity. There's only one ethyl group. Okay. Mm, I might think about one of the stere one of the selectivities. Okay. Think about one of the selectivities. Think about the selectivity. Okay. about selectivity. Let's think about selectivity. Okay. 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 
Okay. Okay. Okay. Think about selectivity, Emma. Okay, for products. <coughs> What's under your hand? Okay, but it's about selectivities. Okay. 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 Pull from the back. Okay. 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 What about stereo selectivity? Okay. Okay. Uh, think about selectivity. I seen everybody's <coughs> okay I'll give you a last chance for me to take a look at it Okay, any others? Okay. All right, so what am I adding to the double bond? Two H's. And when I write when I'm writing when I'm writing my initial molecule this way, I'm just waiting to put in the bold and dashed wedges. Is all. I'm just adding the two H's to the double bond. Okay, um, Markovnikov, anti-Markovnikov. Neither, because it's a symmetrical reagent. Regioselective? It's not going to be regioselective because I'm adding two, OA, two H's. So whether I add the H's this way or this way, doesn't matter. I'm not going to make two products. So this, is, so this one automatically is not regioselective. Uh, how do I add the two hy hydrogens? Cis trans 50 50. Cis. Cis. Okay, so they would both go on a bold or both dashed. And then in this case, the ethyl group would go on a dashed one. Right. Yes? I know they're both cis because when we talked about the mechanism, for the hydrogenation, it wasn't a mechanism that I had you memor or have you memorize. But what happens is, is that the hydrogen gas comes down and it sits on the palladium surface, and then when the double bond comes in, comes down, both hydrogens add at the same time. So I think at the time what I said was something like this: you would have like the double bond go here, and that double bond go there. And then what I wrote on the chart was I wrote a square kind of transition state to go with the fact that if we have a square transition state, it's always going to be cis. So in this case, it's going to be cis addition. And I know that simply because that's what it does. So we have to know we have to know this, we have to know this chart. And if you go back at some of the mechanisms for, you know, for the mechanisms I'm not asking you to memorize, I gave you those mechanisms because of the fact that we have these different shapes. So if it's a triangle, it's always 100% trans. If it's square, cis. If it's five-membered ring, it's cis. If it's a carbocation, 50-50. Okay. 
So remember, there's underlying reasons for that. So if you're just like, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to memorize this entire chart. Again, don't mess with your system. If that's your system and it works, then that's what you want to do. But what, I'm, what I try and do is give you, well, why is that the case? Why, is, why are the Markovnikovs Markovnikov? Because in each one of those cases, I'm adding an electrophile to the double bond. The electrophile has to go on the carbon with the most hydrogens because the carbocation is going to be the carbon that's most substituted because that's the most stable carbocation that's formed. Anti-reverse anti is everything, so that I'm adding a radical. The most substituted radical is what's going to form, and that's where the hydrogen will add. Okay. So in this case, I've added the two hydrogens, cis, stereoselective, yes or no? There's no chiral centers. Do we agree with that? We don't? How many chiral centers? One? There's no chiral centers because I can't draw the mirror plane of symmetry and it cut through that carbon. You don't, if you don't like that, this is number four. This would be number, probably this would be three. But CH2 versus CH2, CH2 versus CH2, CH2 versus CH2. I end up in the same place. There's not four groups attached to that carbon, so it's not chiral. <coughs> So zero or one chiral carbons isn't enough. Why, why one chiral carbon isn't enough? Because in all these reactions, if I have a single chiral carbon, I'm always making 50-50 R and S. Because in order for me to make an unequal mixture of R and S, I need to have a chiral reagent. There is no chiral reagent that we use in any of these reactions. So it's always 50-50. So that means I need two. Two chiral centers gives me the possibility of forming diastereomers, which I do. <coughs> so the mirror plane cuts the molecule in half so that the left, so that the top part here is the same as the bottom part there. Now you'd say, but wait, the H is on the left side and the ethyl group's on the right side. No. The H and the ethyl group are right in that mirror plane. Because if you remember from a cyclohexane, one would be axial up, the other would be equatorial. The mirror plane is like going right through the center of them. So a mono-substituted cyclohexane ring is not chiral because there's no chiral centers. Again, bold and dashed wedges don't mean that everything is chiral. Because over here there's another hydrogen, so whether it goes in bold or dash, there's another hydrogen that's there. So this one is not stereoselective as well. All right. Any questions? So in the problem set that's in today's folder, I step you through cyclohexene, methyl cyclohexene, dimethyl cyclohexene, methyl ethyl cyclohexene with each one of these reagents because if I change the reagent, I can change the answer in terms of whether it's stereo or regioselective. And so you have to go back and you have to think about that for each reaction. Okay. Right, next one.
Was that two BRs? Mm -hmm. You might want to think about that. I think that's okay. Um, yours. Okay. 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 Do you have stereo on there? Or a selectivity on there? Okay. 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 Think about stereo. Think about your stereo chem or your your selectivities. Um, okay. Think about. Oh, okay. It's fine. Okay. You're okay. Good grace. Um, you're okay. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Natalie. Okay, Kaylee. I think about stereo select. Uh, think about your selectivities. I think okay. Jazz room, jazz room, okay. Uh, think about selectivity. Okay. 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 Think about your selectivities. Think about your selectivities again. Okay, and then you want to think about selectivities. Okay. Okay. Okay, Catherine. You're missing an atom. If what? If so, if like at least one of your mini tests isn't, like, is symmetrical, then it's not reduced selective, or do you both have to be symmetrical? No. Or just one of them? At least one of them. Okay. Any other ones you want me to look at? Okay. All right, so what are we adding to the double bond? A BR and an OH. It's, and it's. It's important that when you see Br and the OH that you or bromine and water, you add Br and OH. Okay, it's not just two Brs. If the water's there, it's Br and OH. So we're going to add a Br and OH. Markovnikov. Now the reaction is Markovnikov, but is it in this case? Because each carbon has how many hydrogens? Each carbon in the double bond has one hydrogen, so again, it would be a 50-50 addition. So there's no Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov product as the major product. So that means, is the reaction regioselective? No, it's not regioselective. And again, both reagents don't have to be symmetrical. One of them does. So if you're adding Br and OH, but you're adding it to a double bond that's symmetrical, there's still no regioselectivity. Okay? So just one of them has to be. All right, how did I add the Br and the OH? Cis, trans, 50-50? 100% trans. 
Does it matter whether the BR is bold or dashed? No, just as long as the BR and the OH are opposite. So in that case on the test, would you want us to write like two products and just switch, like put the OH on a bold and the BR on a no? No, uh, it wouldn't. It wouldn't matter. See, so let me let me ask let me ask this question. So let's say let's say you decide I'm going to write these two products. <coughs> What's the stereochemical relationship between these two products? They are they're an antimers because the top carbon's opposite and the bottom carbon's opposite. Now, it is understood that when you write this product or this product, if you write either product, the other one's got to be there in an equal amount. Because whenever we are doing one of these reactions, we're always going to get a 50-50 mixture between an antimers. So these two products would be formed 50-50, but they are enantiomers. So if you wrote either one of those two products, you're basically writing both of them. Because it's understood that we always have a 50-50 mixture of enantiomers. Now, what's what would not, what's going to make, well, well, let me take a, let's take a step back. Okay, does that make sense to everybody that those two are enantiomers? So it doesn't matter which one you write, you don't have to write one of them. Because it's understood that the other one's going to be there. Is this reaction stereoselective? Yes. Why is it stereoselective? Well, if I pull my flow chart out, my flow chart says, is the reaction 100% cis or trans? Yes, in this case it's 100% trans because bromonium ions the triangle. How many chiral carbons are there in this molecule? There's two. Stereoselective. So what is the other? Right, selectivity means that I had to have two products and I had to choose one over the other. So what's the other product that I'm choosing? I'll make it a rhetorical question as soon as this thing leaves. Leave. Leave. The other product is that we are selecting over is this one. Where the BR and the OH are cis. Now, what am I doing? I'm making 100% of this. How much percent of that is this? It's 0%. But as we kind of talked about last week, they never made a term for 100 to 0. It's not a special term. It's just being selective. Right? You could be, you could know people that always make the same choice. They make that choice 100% of the time. Whether it's a good or bad, that'll be up to you and whoever you're, whoever you're thinking about. But it's 100 to 0. You're still being selective. Right? There's no exclusive term that says, oh, this is 100 to 0. 100 to 0 is the same as 5149. You are still selective. So the other stereoisomer that we're selecting over is the diastereomer of that major product. So in this case, this is another possible product. It's just not formed. So that's what's making the reaction stereoselective. But I'm not selecting over enantiomers. I never select one enantiomer over another because I don't have a chiral reagent that's letting me do that. Not in these reactions. Okay. 
wouldn't have to write the sys option. No, you would not have to write the sys option, but in order to know, or in order to remember that it's stereo selective, you have to remember it is there. So, since it's like this one, you don't have to write like the OH on top of the graph at all, right? No. You, I would accept this one, I would accept this one, I would accept the OH on the top, the BR on the bottom. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look and make sure you added a BR and an OH. I'm going to make sure you added them trans. And then that's the major product of the reaction, regardless of the order. But I'm just pointing out the fact that the enantiomer of that molecule is still there. I'm also pointing out the fact that this reagent, again, goes by Markovnikov addition, but if the alkene is symmetrical, there is no Markovnikov or anti-Markov product. It will give the same product whether I add this way or this way. Okay. So that's how we have to approach it. But as, as you just saw... When I give you this problem, the first thing we need to know is those three, the answers to those three questions. What am I adding? How am I adding it? How am I adding it? And if you know the answers to those three questions, you can write the product. And then, is it regio or stereo selective? Again, there are certain things that immediately, it's not. It's not regio, it's not stereo. And this is here just... If you do a number, if you need a need something to start with, you can start with this. But after a while, hopefully, after you've done some problems, you'll begin to see. But fo as you're doing this, again, I don't want to mess with your system, but I would propose a better system is to remember why this works the way that it does. Okay. So, on, uh, if you have questions, put them up on Piazza. I have some questions I need to answer this afternoon. Um, but put more questions on there. On Wednesday, we're going to talk about um, free radical halogenation. So, I put the chapters from the text that are there. I will put a video up this afternoon if you want to watch a video as well as reading. We will not complete that chapter on Wednesday. We will complete it next week after the exam. You do not have to put that on your list of topics because I will either add that or not add that to the list after Wednesday. Okay, but we need we need to do that beforehand. Um, are we? I need to have the production in oxidation. Are we going to know that exam? Uh, oxidation reduction. For these reactions, that might be helpful in terms of what reactions are. Okay. I mean, the, the cleavage reactions, you're going to have to be able to write the products. There. Okay. But they don't fit regio and stereoselectivity. Okay.